Good morning. Trees. Oh, Christmas trees. It's the last day of our four day. Our van just rolled up. One leg back to LaGuardia. And I am free. No more trips until um until until Christmas, I think. Craziness. Stay in Christmas, my true love gave to me. Today's vlog was day 13, and we are starting the 12th days of Christmas. So I got this box from oh, it's bench. 12 Days of Beauty from Tarjay. An exclusive gift set. So let's see what's in day number one. Looks like this. Day number one is here. Oh! Mascara! I've used this mascara back in the day. So, Maybelline Great Lash Keeps Mascara in Oh, it's a carry-on one, too. Keep mascara in your carry-on. A little touch-up is all it takes to look alive and alert when you hop off the plane. Oh, yeah? That's perfect for me. Thank you, Tarjay. Christmas day number uno. Bam. Okay, so I decided that I'm going to do a question and answer video today. Just got back from my four-day trip. Um, like not even an hour ago and I've been getting lots of questions and comments on some of these YouTube videos so I'm gonna answer them okay so first statement really kind of question Dan C is asking why doesn't my airline use carts in the aisle while doing drink and snack service instead of using the trays so some of you all know which airline I work for some of you don't it's pretty easy to figure out, but my airline is pretty much a, a baby airline. Well, it's an adult now. We're at 18 years of being in business, and they're all about personalizing and giving customers the best experience. When they were first, you know, coming up with the way that they were going to do things, they decided that using trays would be a more personable way to, you know, talk with your customers and things like that. Um, is it easier for us? No, it's definitely not. Um, it's a lot of walking back and forth. There's a lot of back pain. You know, it's easier to spill a drink on a customer and just little things like that. You forget things. So it does tend to make it a little bit more work for us. But that's just what my airline chose to do. So we don't really have a say so in that. Um, but we are going to be going to carts pretty soon. I'm not going to say that the flight attendants complained about it, but it was something that they asked for. And so they finally decided to give it to us. So yay to that. This one says, can you please make a video of what to take to training must have or something that you wish you would have taken? Um, I'm not going to do a full video on it, but I will answer it. You can go back and watch my um training playlist i have i think it's about 16 or 17 videos that i vlogged while i was actually in training and it goes into great details and you'll kind of see what you need and what you don't need there my airline was really good because they provided us with a lot of things while we were there that i didn't have to bring from home um I was really glad that I brought my own personal laptop because there were some days that we had to do um, online like homework and things like that and the computer labs would get pretty full so I had my personal laptop to do that not everybody brought their laptop so I was happy that I brought mine was there anything else that I wish I would have had while I was there not really I mean I had my cell phone um, I had my laptop they provided us with food, so I didn't need to go buy food. Um, yeah, I, I feel like I came pretty fully prepared. Fawn, was there anything you wanted to bring that you didn't bring or wish you would have brought? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> my specific airline, I can't speak on any other airline. I've never been to any other airline training. What about you? My roommate has been to lots of airline trainings. What about other airlines? They don't give you shit. You gotta do your own grocery shopping, do your own laundry. 
So but the, mostly everything you, I wouldn't suggest bringing it. Just buy it when you get there, or use Amazon. Just ship it on Amazon. Use Amazon. Yeah. Online. So Fawn says, you know, just pack the the necessities. So my airline was really good because they built a hotel specifically for crew members to, um, you know, use while. Um, training at our training facilities. So it literally had everything there for us. We had our own laundry room. We ha They had the the cafeteria, the restaurants downstairs. Like, there was nothing that we just really, like, needed for. The only thing I would say to bring is maybe if you want a blanket from home to feel comfortable or, you know, like, something like that. Because, I mean, I, I was... bring a blanket. I bought a, a throw. Fawn brought a throw. I didn't bring any throws. I didn't bring anything That's like. Because I'm always home. Oh, you know, maybe some photos to make your room feel a little more homey because you are there for four candle. plus weeks. I brought a candle too. Fawn brought a candle. I didn't bring a candle. And a Bluetooth speaker. And Fawn. Oh, well, no, the room had speakers. Yeah, but mine was better. Fawn <laughs> brought a Bluetooth speaker. Um, the rooms that we had had um, the little iPod dock speakers. But maybe the hotels that you're staying, if you're not going to training with my specific airline, might not have that. That is something that I used every morning. I woke up, I listened to my music, got, you know, ready mentally and things like that. Whatever your routines are in the morning, if you don't think that the hotel is going to have that, bring that. Or your nightly routine, you know, if it's anything out of the blue, bring that stuff with you. But as far as just like basics, um... I had got like note cards and all those type of things and notebooks and papers and pens and highlighters. I really didn't use that because of the way that I ended up studying and that worked best for me. I just read it directly from our flight attendant manual. Like this, this was bay for me. So it was bay. So I really didn't end up, like I took notes in class. Like I, I actually physically wrote notes, but the only reason I did that was to stay awake, you know, <laughs> like literally. I never ever went back and read those notes to study because everything was there for us. But maybe for your airline that you're gonna train with, they might do things differently or you might just be a better, um, you might just learn better by taking notes. So definitely bring your highlighters, bring your flashcards if you wanna study that way. Those little things will definitely do. But Fawn made a good comment. I mean, anything that you don't have or... Because one, you don't want to overpack yourself either. Because remember, you're going to go to training with a whole bunch of stuff. And you're probably going to leave with a bunch more because you'll probably end up getting uniforms while you're there. And you just collect things over time, you know? So if there is anything that you do need, you can always order it on Amazon and have it shipped directly to you. Or go to the store wherever you are and get it. You have downtime when you're in training. You know, I know it seems like a lot of people is like, oh my gosh, training is so crazy. You know, all you have time to do is study this and do this and go to class. That's only if you make your life that way. You can have time to yourself. You can take an hour to go to the grocery store. If you're not going to training with my company, you probably will have to find time to go to the grocery store and meal prep and, and have food to eat. I know a lot of airlines don't provide that. So just breathe. Bring a picture of mommy, daddy, your dog, brother, sister, boyfriend, cousins, whoever. Put that up there and make it feel like home and you'll be good. That was a long answer for one question. Um, this isn't really a question. It's more of a comment too, but I'm going to respond. Um, this is a comment on the video that I just posted about flight attendant pet peeves. Penia Penia says, your attitude has changed since you graduated. I'm more aggressive. I'm not more aggressive. I've been this way my entire life. But during training, there weren't really any stories like that to tell you because... Everything was cool and chill, and the only thing I was doing was stressing about making an 80 on a test. You know, like, that was it. I didn't have any silly, crazy customers to kind of rile me up. Um, and just, obviously, the more comfortable I get with vlogging, the more my personality comes out. So if you want to consider that aggressive, I don't really consider it aggressive. It's just showing you everything that can kind of happen in this aviation world and also during training we were taught that during certain situations you will have to have situational assertiveness so in those moments like that 
I am just flexing my situational assertiveness because you don't want to become a flight attendant and be a pushover. That's your aircraft. It's the captains, it's the first officers, and then it trickles on down to us. And we're the ones out there dealing with the customers while the captains are behind their closed doors. So, you have to flex it a little bit. You have to let these people know that, you know, this is your plane and they need to follow these rules. And, you know, there's regulations for a reason. So, if you want to consider it aggressive, I don't really think I'm aggressive. I just think that I'm doing my job the best way that I can. Teresa Hughes says I should do a lookbook video. Um, I enjoy fashion. I'm not going to do a lookbook video. That just sounds like a lot of work and that means I would have to go shopping and I don't need to do any more shopping. But I will post a video of the pants that I bought from Zara when I actually wear it and find a shirt to go with it. Angelique Diva, 1988. That was the year that I was born. Hey girl. Um, how do you find a crash pad? So there's plenty of ways to find a crash pad. Online to Facebook and there's a lot of crash pad apps on there. There's, depending on where you're going, there's crash pad... 101 or something like that crash pad connection uh, crew gardens is a, a crash patch a crash pad page here for um new york based flight attendants there's a lot of them um, i'll post them in the description box down below with the links and then you can also look on like craigslist i know fawn was looking on craigslist before we moved here and then really just word of mouth and also ask your base managers and things like that. They always know somebody that has a crash pad or people, other people looking for crash pads. Or you can make your own crash pad. So, I mean, they're out there. You just kind of have to do the research. Just Google it. <laughs> or ask Siri. And Siri will tell you where a crash pad is. Elizabeth Airy. Sorry if I'm slaughtering your last name, Elizabeth. Elizabeth Ariella, if I'm sorry if I'm not saying that right, you commented down below, um, why don't I respond all the time? And I've already responded to you in the, the comments, but I just want anybody else that may be thinking that I'm ignoring you all, I don't ignore you all. But YouTube, it's not really easy to respond on there all the time. And I'm busy, like while we're flying, there are definitely certain times where we cannot be on our cell phones, so I'm not on my cell phone. Um, when I get to my hotel, sometimes I just want to sleep and have some downtime to myself. I still run my real estate business, um, and I want to spend time, you know, living my personal life as well. So, if I don't get back to you ASAP, um, I will eventually I usually take about two or three days out the week to kind of scroll through my comments and see what what I've missed like I'm doing right now and then I'll respond but it's not something that I can just drop everything that I'm doing and respond just because I got a comment I do appreciate you all subscribing and speaking and interacting um, but just give me a little bit that's all and if you really want a really quick response message me on Instagram because I usually respond a lot quicker on there than I do on YouTube. For Jacob asked about the trays as well. You just heard my response. We will be switching over to carts eventually. And yes, I am looking forward to it. Fawn, are you looking forward to it? Yeah. Fawn is looking forward to it too. Raymond J. Baker says, Vlogmas is coming along. Will I make it to the 25th? It was more of a comment than a question. But I am going to make it to the 25th. Next week is going to be kind of boring while I'm in training because I don't know what I'm going to vlog about. Um, maybe I'll just force Fawn to do stupid things with me and we'll vlog then. Wait, <laughs> <laughs> so me and my roommate are both going to um, first class training next week. So we're going to be attached at the hip. And let me tell y'all what she did. So we picked yeah. up a trip. No, no, no. No, uh-uh. We picked, I picked up a trip. I told y'all, the trip for Christmas Eve where I have the 27-hour layover and I was going to drive to Houston. So she picked it up with me and she was going to come home for the holidays with me because she ain't got nothing else to do. You know she dropped the trip. <laughs> I don't want to do that work. Because she don't want to work. 
I was already switching the F1, the F2 and the F1 position with her so I could do majority of the work. And then she dropped the trip behind my you back. You gotta do a Nassau turn. I so what? I don't wanna do no international flight. She might, you don't have to do nothing. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Can y'all believe she dropped the trip? Email a person, whoever picked up, and tell them to give it back. Didn't even tell me she dropped the dang on trip. I told you. I come in today. Oh, I dropped that trip. Helpful. <laughs> again, hello, Elizabeth. Um, how are you managing your commute home to Houston? Are you far from the airport, and do you keep your car at the airport? I'm assuming you're speaking. All those questions have to do with in Houston. Um, my commute to Houston isn't that bad because right now I'm only going home about twice a month, so it's pretty easy. Um, that's yeah. Do I live far from the airport in Houston? I fly out of IH Airport in Houston, the international airport. Um, and it's about 20, 25 minutes from my house. And do you keep your car at the airport? No, I don't keep my car there because I don't go back and forth often enough. So I either take an Uber or I force my mother to drop me off. <laughs> it is a force. She don't ever want to do it. Elizabeth, again, asks, does the uniform run small? This is getting a little... Um, a little company specific, but no, I don't think it runs small. Yeah, it's it, big, actually. The dress definitely runs yeah. kind of big, maybe true to size, depending on who you are and how you like your clothing to fit. Yeah. If you want to look like you walking down a runway, yeah, then <laughs> yeah, you probably might want. Most people get the dress altered, actually. Mine fit me just fine. Like whatever, my sleeves are a little short, but. I don't care. Sonarvis, one of my first subscribers, hey. Sonarvis asks, how does commuting work? First come, first serve, or by seniority? Also, where did most of the graduates go? Is Fort Lauderdale hard to get into? This is also very airline specific. Um, so for my airline, commuting is first come, first serve. So, and depending on what priority you are. So when you book, there's different levels you know either your revenue passenger or your s3 or your s4 or your s5 s6 s7 s8 those are all different paying customer um crew member that's using a, a super pass a super pass means you can pass up everybody else that's in line s4 is just regular employees of the airline and then they're also defined by flight attendant pilot and then just regular crew members people that cannot sit in a jump seat um and then you have s5s what are s5s s5s are going to be like your the people on your benefits um whoever you have listed as companion husband mother all of that stuff then you have s6s as buddy passes and then i believe i don't know if there is a s7 but, and then you have other airlines and things like that. So that's how that works. But within those groupings, it's going to be first come, first serve, as in who checked in first. So if I have a flight that leaves tomorrow at 10 p.m., I need to check in tonight at 10 p.m., 24 hours ahead. And whoever is on the list in order, that's who they're supposed to call first for the... Mm -hmm next available seats with but they're gonna start as s3s s4s and move down that way also where did most of the graduates go there was 33 people in that graduation class 20 went to boston and 13 went to jfk is fort lauderdale hard to get into um you're gonna wait a few months to get a base transfer to fort lauderdale more than likely you will not be able to get into there right out of training with my airline the most junior bases are going to be JFK and Boston, and then you have Fort Lauderdale, then you have Orlando, and then you have Long Beach. Long Beach is about, right now, I think, like seven to eight years of sitting on reserve, maybe more. And Orlando is like right underneath them, and then Fort Lauderdale is about two to three years sitting reserve. Elizabeth has another question. Are you paid the standard flight attendant rate? I would have to go back and watch the video where she asked that question. That's a bit of an older video. I don't remember what I was talking about. But this was during training, so I'm assuming she's asking, do we get paid the same amount in training that we get paid once we're on the line? And no, we don't. If I think that's what you're trying to ask me. So in training, we do get paid. It's not a lot of money, but it's nice to have. Once we get on the line, we actually get 
and just there is no standard flight attendant rate so <laughs> I wish there was a standard and I wish it was like the amount that um, Southwest pays but it's not so yeah they pay us during training it's not the same amount that you receive once you get your wings but you do get paid at my specific airline um and then i just want to tell y'all thank you for all the very nice comments that y'all left on the i was three minutes late to my interview video y'all said some really 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 nice things and i appreciate it a lot um freedom speaks as when is my airline hiring again and honestly guys i don't know we were kind of known for hiring um january april uh, July and October that they did I think last year I'm honestly not sure if they're gonna be doing that again this year so we just had the application open in October <laughs> Fawn is over there trying to go to sleep and I'm interrupting her <laughs> they opened the application in October and it was open for about five days and it's been closed now will they open it again in January I'm, I don't know. I don't know. I really have no idea. Byromania says, my YouTubers are killing it for Vlogmas. I love it. Vlogmas is fun, and it's a lot of work, so I hope y'all appreciate it. <laughs> it's really a lot of work to post a vlog every day while you're working, while you're trying to live, while you're trying to eat. Boy, oh boy. I can't eat and upload and well I guess I do vlog and eat y'all see me eating all the time I never nap on my vlogs I say I nap y'all probably think I'm the laziest person on earth because I always say I'm tired because I am I'm tired right now beauty beholder <laughs> beauty beholder asks do I need a roommate or someone to rent my home in Texas no I don't my parents are selling that house and moving so they they not even worried about me. I won't have a home in Houston, Texas. <laughs> all right, I think that's all the question and answers that I have for today. That's going to be the end of Vlogmas Day 13, y'all. I'm going to keep it short and sweet and cute. Don't forget to um, go to my Instagram page and comment on the God is Dope picture, hashtag God is Dope, and tell me why God is Dope so you can enter to win the God is Dope hat right that's ending on friday i think because i did it last week friday so make sure you subscribe like and share till next time